Okay, thank you, Ricardo. Um, I hope everyone is hearing. If not, you can um, let Ricardo know. Yes, I'm hearing you. Uh, okay. Um, in 2018, beginning of 2018, the Town and Country Planning Division invited the ISTT to send representatives of the Institute as a stakeholder to give feedback on their system that they were implementing called the Building and Construction Permitting System. They had a consultant came in from um, outside and this was all part of the state's effort to improve the ease of doing business in Trinidad and Tobago. One of the major problems that was identified is actually the ease of doing land transactions, which is the basis of most economic endeavors in the country. As a result, the Town and Country Planning Division decided uh, to hire this consultant through the Ministry of um, Public Administration. And the consultant came down, looked at Town and Country's operations in particular, the building and permitting system. And, and as I say, building and permitting, we have to remember, we are also talking about subdivision of land as defined by the Town and Country Planning Act, which is one of our major concerns for our. Hello, you're right here. So one of our major concerns for our um, members being land surveyors, valuation surveyors, and quantity surveyors. So over time, the consultant looked at their business processes, mapped how their applications got in, uh, how they were processed internally, and developed this system, which we now call the TCPD's construction building and permitting systems, as I said. In 2020, last year, early, the system was rolled out in a sample area, which was really the Port of Spain, the city of Port of Spain, it was first as a test area. Eventually that was then expanded mm -hmm. later on in the year to include the Samoa Lab until Regional Corporation, the Diego Martin Corporation. And now it is expanded down to the central region. I believe it's region five, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong in the number, but it extends all the way down now to the Claps and yeah. the region five border. The southern and um, eastern areas and Tobago are not on the system to my knowledge at this point in time. So as stakeholders, we were asked to send representatives, myself and I believe Nicholas Westmus attended at some of the sessions also, and we gave feedback um, to the Town and Country Planning Division uh, contractor. Uh, there were several meetings held, I think it was something like seven or eight meetings being held, and there were some preliminary training sessions for get, to get a hands-on feel as to how the system was working and how it operated. Um, therefore, this presentation is in summary of what occurred at that point in time and where we are heading to now. So some of the things that were being asked um, from Ricardo, um, the questions that he mentioned earlier, is how many people have access to TC BizLink, uh, and that's a valid BizLink account, because a lot of people have their accounts and they have not renewed their passwords, etc., and they have lapsed, so you need to have that first and foremost. As I said, the entire process is being funded by the ease of doing business, and that's why the TT BizLink comes in. That's our, supposedly our one shop portal to enter into any, any government business, including paying your taxes and other functions, not just the town and country planning uh, system. So we'll just start off. Um, I hope everyone is seeing the screen. I have shared it. Um, so we'll just go on from there. I have it maximized, so I won't be seeing too much of it. Right. So in terms of town and country, they have various applications that they deal with, uh, both land development and building development, starting from residential, single family, residential, multifamily, and institutional. And these are just some screen dumps. I think most surveyors, at least the land surveyors or people who are familiar with town and country would have received these handouts as um, 
in the form of emails from town and country. And it just gives you some summaries as to what the various requirements are for each type of application. Uh, one of the intents of the system is to eventually link in all of the statutory bodies that are involved in approving projects, whether it's a residential single dwelling house, all the way up to a massive uh, state project. So the entire system is intended to be linked at some point in time. Um, to my knowledge, that has not been completed and the rollout of that system, I suppose, would be phased over time. Right, so just some more application types that we have in addition to the residential, we have the commercial, we have industrial warehousing. And the external agencies, not, not a complete list, just some of them that I've listed here, you'll have the local health authority, which is of course the final one that gives you the approval. Drainage division, if you have a major water course or you want to change any water courses within your parcel. Highways division, if you're bordering onto a, a highway or primary road. EME for parcels, large um, parcels that you're going to do, land clearance, et cetera, WASA, TNTEC, FIRE. So these are just some of the local health, um, sorry, uh, statutory bodies that you will typically need to get approval from. They are supposedly in this chain of linkage from this system. The, because some, um, some of the bodies are not on the chain of, of the system as yet, uh, it still may be necessary we were told from town and country that you would have to still send in their relevant hard copy applications. So whether it's local health, drainage, highways, or what have you, um, they will guide you as to which ones you will still have to continue uh, sending in via hard copies. So the municipal bodies and corporations that are participating in this are all the municipal corporations in Trinidad and Tobago. So these are just some of their badges. So you'll be familiar with them. I'm not gonna to spend too much time on this, but it's all the boroughs and all the uh, regional corporations for those boroughs together with the city corporations and the THA are going to be involved in this project when it's fully rolled out. Statutory bodies also, have some of their icons here so you can at your leisure this wow by the way this presentation will be sent to you by email um, after the session so you can spend some additional time going to through each one of the slides any questions you have you can pass it on to me later on so as i said the consultant came in their conceptual design was to uh, a range of system that will allow you to register and log in to use the developed tt system um, allow you to submit the applications for your various planning and building, land development and building uh, permissions that you would need to get. Uh, also have a link, as I said, to the other statutory bodies so that those agencies would be able to also give you their permissions. You would be able to receive the building permits directly and, the, and also the completion certificates, status of uh, land, uh, approval for town and country, outline and final approval through this system. All, basically everything that you will get by hard copy will now be sent to you via the system in an electronic format. Um, as I said, I saw that recently the Town and Country Planning Division indicated that they would be putting all the status of land um, into the system. I'm not sure if that has come on as yet, but if it hasn't, it probably is pending to be um, entered that you can make online requests for status of land certificates or letters. Right, so the system allows you to request the deviations from planning permissions and decisions. And we will see that when we get into the actual application process, where one of the main questions that they ask you, preliminary questions before they let you go into actually enter any information is whether your request meets with the current zoning. Now, one of the problems surveyors have had over the years is that we, typically don't know what the zoning for a particular area is. That is now addressed because they, they have made their zoning map available to you. So you can see what is the approved zoning for the site that you are looking for. And it's an interactive dynamic map and we will come to that a little bit later on. You can also track and view your application on your dashboard. In fact, just today I had some, my first application was actually submitted to the central area in the beginning of December. I think it was the fourth or sixth of December. 
and only today I got the response of the decision from town and country. So it seems to be working in the system in the way it's intended. Uh, my only query with the system at this point in time as a user has to do with um, how to deal with the more complex applications that we have. And we will not be addressing those issues at this point in time. Uh, that would be taken up at a later point in time with town and country directly. Uh, you can also submit complaints about unauthorized developments and view online description. So your site location map has now changed from a word sheet extract and this line drawing that town and country typically will ask you to do as a site diagram to a digital drawing where you would put in your site onto a map that will allow a planning officer to visit your site in real time using GPS and a tablet. So it's a lot, um, a lot of new things that we are doing, trying to improve the rate at which town and country addresses each one of the processes that they have when an application is submitted. And we will look at some of those processes in a little while. Right, so the entire system is called, as I said, develop TT. This is the web page. The website is develop.gov.tt. And this is the first thing that you would see when you go on to that website. And the area that you would be looking at is the login area here to the top. Now, as I said, this is all part of the ease of doing business. So pre-requirements for the access before you can even get onto the site, you need to get a, a TT Connect ID and a TT BizLink registration done. For, uh, one of the questions uh, Ricardo had for you is how many people have these things already in place? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, valid ones so that is, and how many still need to do that? Mm -hmm. uh, we can, um, as an institute, make representation to the TT BizLink organization to get um, our surveyors done as a batch if necessary, our users also. Um, so we can look at that uh, at a later point once you answer the questions back to Ricardo. So, uh, the TT Connect is a 13 unique, a 13 digit unique number issued through an electronic authentication mechanism. Uh, it's required for you to electronically access services from a gov, um, across the government portal that has been developed for not only town and country, but uh, Ministry of Finance and many other uh, agencies of state. So it is not only useful for town and country, but as a business person, you would find it of use for everything else. And the TT BizLink provides a single electronic window that allows you access to the government's trade and business services, including finance, uh, taxes, et cetera, and town and country. Uh, so when you're going into TT BizLink, there are two things that you can register under, and I have them highlighted here with the green arrows. One, you can register as an individual or you can register as a limited liability company. I strongly recommend for those people who are registered company owners as um, LLCs that you register using this approach because you would also have access to your taxes and other um, state uh, portals that would be relevant to your business. So if once you have a registered business, do it through the business. If you don't have a registered business, and this includes people who are considered sole traders should register as individuals. So when you go onto the TT BizLink website, you would see the steps and the relevant registration forms that are available that you will fill out and email back to them. And they normally get back to you within about one to two days and give you the approval. It's not a very drawn out process, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. Um, they also provide, as I said, the steps on the website. So you have a lot of information there that guides you. I, I went through the system um, directly. You do require two valid forms of ID and you have to email all that information to them. I think they also want a picture of you holding up your ID card next to your face. Uh, a little bit strange, but nevertheless, you will get through with it relatively fast. So I'm not gonna to spend too much time on this. And let's get into the actual application process. So 
we would have submitted manual application forms for the development of land um, that includes subdivision, um, change of use of land and buildings. That's typically what we do as surveyors. Um, the land development application will typically go through two phases, which is your, what you typically call outline approval and final approval. So, but you're not going to see these on the forms, but these are just the historical approaches that we submit applications to town and country. In the application process diagram on the right hand side of the screen, you would see a basically a flow chart of all the processes that would go through that your application needs to traverse before you get your final uh, approval or refusal as the case may be. So you would have to submit the application. Um, they would receive an application. The agency that is done on country will re review it. They will do their site visit for their field officers. They may determine whether no information is required, either yes or no. If it, no information is required, it just goes on. If more information is required, they will then go to through a feedback loop to you, requesting that you submit that application. And all this can be done online. So once you have submitted any uh, additional information that they may require, you, they will then go on to do the assessment in-house. Um, the planning officer, which is the chief officer, will review the application, make a decision. Uh, they will then submit the final decision and send it to you via an email link. So you will get actually an email link telling you a decision has been made, what the decision is, and access to the actual letter that you would typically get in hard copy from town and country at that point in time. So that's basically the, the normal process that any application will go through in summary. When you go onto the site, uh, the first thing that you will meet is your dashboard. It's not by me. Uh, this will give you a dashboard of all features of what you have submitted, what action is required, what number of applications and outline have been approved, um, what final approval that have been obtained, um, how many building permits if you have submitted a building um, application, how many completion certificates issued, um, how many refused by TCPD, how many rejected by the regional corporation. So it just gives you a summary as to where it is, well, your body of work that is, not individual applications at this point in time. So the application as we know it is in two forms, the outline and the final. Um, the system basically will take you through a questioning system that will ask you five different questions, I believe it is. Uh, we'll see that in a little while. And those five questions, will, they will then tell you whether you should submit an outline application or a final application. Uh, any of the questions that are negative will lead you into an outline application first, followed by a final. The system is set up in such a way that the outline flows into the final approval afterwards. So as I said, the same application number would then be used for both the outline and the final application, and that will track all the way through the history of any particular application. Uh, you still have the option, if you desire not to send in an outline approval, but you have to go around the system by telling all of them um, to still go ahead with the final, and we'll see that a little bit later on also. So you still have your option if you desire to circumvent the outline and go straight to the final, as you would have in a manual system. So the input application information, um, it is similar to what you would put in the TCPD one, which is the outline uh, application form, the formal name for it, or the TCPD tree form, which is the final application for any uh, submission to the Town and Country Planning Division. Uh, the next thing that you will go through to is a georeferent site location. So previously, as I said, you would have sent in a hard copy of a ward sheet showing where the site is with lamp pole numbers, um, typically bars, because everybody knows where the bars in a, in a village is, or landmarks that would be of assistance to the site officer in locating the particular parcel of land that is relevant to the application. So it, in this particular tab, it would require, this is phase two, stage two rather, it will identify you, sorry, you will identify on a digital map, the location 
and the outline of your site. So you'll be required to draw polylines essentially around roughly the shape and the location of where your site is. That will allow the planning officer to know exactly where your site is and they are supposed to be provided with GPS, et cetera, and tablets when they're doing the site visit. So it will enable them to do this a much faster and not have to go backward and forward and try to figure out whether there was a lamp pole on the, on the uh, sketch map for location or not. So at the end of it, you, you're basically creating a polygon around your parcel of land. And when you close the polygon, the system will tell you whether that, that is acceptable. In other words, have you put in all the lines and there's a close figure representing the parcel of land for the site. And once that is acceptable, it will then allow you to go on to the next piece. So this is just a small sketch showing an application, just a test um, for a site. And you will be required to put on those four points on the polygon that is in a light brown color that you see on your screen. As you draw it, it will give you some rough distances. So you have an idea how to position um, your polygon in the right way, whether your scale is correct or not. Um, as surveyors, you know, we like to be precise. Um, unfortunately, it does not allow you to upload a DXF file in a relevant coordinate system. You would have to do it manually using the mouse and draw it onto the map in real time when you're making the application. At the end of it, it also calculates an approximate acreage. Don't worry if your measurements are not precise or not even close, really. It's just really to show the location of the parcel. That's the intent. Right. Stage three now will now, so we have completed the initial stage of the application where you'll say who the applicant is, etc. Stage three is now where you put the actual background information to support your application. So you would have your deed or certificate of title. You would have your proposed cadastral plan if it's a subdivision. Um, you could also put a location sketch here if you want and any other document that you think is um, important. So if you have like, for instance, a court order, you can put the court order at this point in this stage. However, you must be aware that the files upload this must be in PDF format. So you don't have a choice in this. You can't upload a drawing file or a JPEG file. It must be in PDF format. So everybody needs to be familiar with how to create PDF formatted files. And also each file must not exceed 10 megabytes in size. If you do try to submit something that's over 10 megabytes, it's going to reject the application. So at that point, if it's that big, you would probably have to deal with the town and country and send in an electronic copy by a USB or, or a CD or something like that. The document upload section, this is a screenshot from it. Um, it has different areas where you would up upload the relevant documents for it. So prior to you doing this application, you would have had all your PDF files created previously. So in the first section, you would put your deed and certificate of title or deeds if there are multiple deeds that you need to put in. Um, the cadastral sheet and survey plan will then follow. So this is your proposal, what you're applying for. Um, location sketch on other documents if you desire to put in a location sketch. And as I said, the other documents could be various things. Um, one of the most common other document that I would submit is a plan showing that the parcel, create, um, parcel that this is coming from my application is concerning would have been created before 1970, as you know, they are required to process those applications and accept them. So after you have submitted all that information, the next stage is they will issue a tracking receipt and they will give you a summary of all the information you have entered. And that tracking number is your unique number, which follows this application from beginning to its end, whether it's an approval or a refusal. Any query that you want to do, you will need to use that tracking number to do the query if you go to call them. That's like a TCPD reference number from their own letters when you get your initial receipt for the submission. So that's an important document that you need to keep track of at some point through your internal system and reference it every time you go on. So that's basically the tracking receipt that you will get. Um, so assuming that you don't have any requests for additional information, and if you, have any, if you do, 
that same stage three when we uploaded those files, you can always go back into the um, application and upload those files and that will then let them know you have supplied the relevant information. Um, the approval certificate now, assuming that you have conformed to their requirements and you are getting the approval, you will get it via a new certificate and the certificate, sorry, has built-in security features. There's a, a watermark logo and a holographic image that's built into it. Um, so when you get that, you can print, you can download it from their site and you can print it out and that becomes your document that you would provide to a, a, another statutory body or your client um, as the case may be. Um, as I said, not all of the agencies, statutory agencies are on the system. So you may get the, the typical letter that tells you that you have to get uh, local health approval, you have to get fire services, you have to get TNT, WASA, whatever the case may be. And you may then need to submit applications to these bodies using the traditional manual method until such time that they are able to enter onto the system. And they will have another uh, training like this, I suppose, for us to guide us on that application process. So we went through the system, thank God you got your approval, but what happens when you get a refusal? The system and all this information, by the way, is on their website in various locations. So you just have to drill down to look for it. You can look for deviation requests. That's one of the things that I spoke about um, very early in terms of what the system allows you to do. So you can have, um, get a refusal and then you can submit a deviation request if the permission is refused. The deviation request um, has certain information that you have to supply for. Um, it will give you a generation number for the deviation application. You would have to put your planning application reference number, which was the first one that you got the refusal on. Um, the policy deviation is what are you asking to change from? Now, as I told you earlier, at one point, the town and country zoning map is available to you. So you can then determine what is the deviation. So something maybe zoned as agricultural and you want to apply for it as homestead or single single family residential use or, or whatever, or some building may be limited to three stories and you want to put a six story, all those things will be inside that area. Um, the site development standard deviation. So what are you asking to change? What do you want it to move to? And your justification as to what is the reason you're asking it for? Are you, are you asking it based on um, uh, regularization of existing thing? Is this thing existing prior to 1970 and you have additional information that you can provide to prove it? Um, do you have other people in the area who are allowed similar uh, permissions? So whatever your justification is, you will put that in. And any supporting documents you can also upload into the deviation request. So this is a very important section that surveyors should spend a lot of time and applicants generally should spend some time getting very familiar with. Right, so in terms of the justification indicated, um, you have a justification list and the types of things that you have to look at and justifying for a deviation would be the existing site condition. So if the area is developed, you already have well-built roads, utilities in the area, et cetera. Um, the patterns of development in the land area, in the area which your land is located. So um, the area is known as agricultural on their map, but everybody using it for homestead or single family residential use, that is the predominant thing. So that's a justification. Um, if it's something that to have minimal effect on the environment, if it's a single family residential or, or something like that, or if it's a commercial application and you're not producing um, significant effluent into the environment, you could make um, representations on that basis. Uh, availability of alternative sites for the proposed development. Um, if the person, this is the only piece of land that the person owns, then this is the only place that they can make that application for. Right? Um, any economic or social costs or benefits in community likely to be generated by the proposed development. If you're putting down a, um, a commercial enterprise that will bring value and provide benefits to the community, a shop, a bar, a 
hardware or what have you, you can make that case also. Uh, the quality of the architectural designs and layout of the proposed development. So you may have had um, your conceptual drawings done already for larger projects and you can submit that here to, to show how you will improve the area and actually propose in, in the larger cases um, a full community type development, self-sustaining. Uh, the existing infrastructure required improvements of the infrastructure. So if your client has already invested in that, you can point that out. Any representations made by members of the community in support of the applications and any other thing that you have to justify that is not covered by their list, you can also put that in, in the description. So in, a, in advising your clients as a surveyor, if your refusal is obtained, these are some of the things that you would need to discuss with your client and get answers to, to form the basis of a deviation application. Right, um, all requests will be considered internally and a final, a final decision on the deviation request will be made and you'll be notified whether it will be approved or no, or no consideration will be given to it. In other words, the decision is final. So that is still there in the process. And oh, I think the IRC, sorry, I didn't um, describe what the IRC is. That is their committee of various stakeholders, statutory bodies, WASATI and Tech Regional Corporation, et cetera. So they can give advice on the application. Right. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the use of um, the, all these screenshots came from Develop TT's website, TCPD handouts, and um, the Ministry of the Government of uh, Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, so I don't claim to have copyrights any of these screenshots and information provided here. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our system. Uh, right, uh, let me see how do I get back. Just give me one second here while I sort of back to the stairs, uh, share screen, right, okay. Right, so um, Ricardo, I think this is a good opportunity to open up the um, lines. Yeah, um, well, we yeah. can maybe, so sorry for cutting you. Um, they, we have been trying, I've been setting up these polls. I set up the polls to ask the questions and I'm mm. not seeing it appearing for whatever reason. Um, so is it that we can just go straight to questions rather than the polls? Is the polls still necessary at this point? No, 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 the polls isn't necessary. Uh, we won't pass that. Um, just to let the, 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 the attendees know, the questions that, I, that we were intending to ask via the polls would be, um, do you have a valid TT BizLink account so we can um, make representations as a group to have those people who don't have the account? So what I would suggest is that uh, our members contact Ricardo, send him an email, let them know if they need help in doing it so we can go as a block and get everything done as, as a, a group rather than individuals um, fighting up on your own. Um, the other question we had was um, whether you have used the TCPD portal before, so we have an idea um, how many people are actually using the system. Um, and also, have you and for those who are using the portal, have you received a response from the automated system for any decision on an application? And the last thing that we wanted to ask is um, if you wanted additional clarification on these specific situations for your applications. As I said, um, I myself had questions as to when you're submitting applications. I know how I did it in the old system with the manual uh, thing. For instance, in some cases, I would have put an application in that would have had an approved design and the developer wanted to change the design to a new layout. Um, you would then have to do an application to amalgamate the parcels and then a new application to subdivide it into the new design, uh, new layout uh, for town and country's approval. Uh, do you do that as one application? Do you do this as two applications? These are some of the questions that um, we would need to get um, some advice from the planner and hopefully when that advice is obtained it will either be made available to our members through the institute um, through a bulletin board or some sort of email so that everybody will be aware of the situation as what is required and how you go about doing it. So I'm sure you all will have your individual um, 
requirements and questions as to how to do this or how to do that. And those things, if you want, the Institute can play a role in assisting our members in submission of those questions. And at least when those responses come, we can host it on our own site and our members generally can see not only their questions, but other questions they may have in the future. And um, they can also provide feedback to uh, the persons asking the questions. Okay. Um, Ricardo, um, do we have any um, questions uh, coming in from the, uh, the chat? Yeah. Yeah, we have one so far from Mr. Burton Williams. Does, okay. that, does the applicant still have the option of approaching the appeal board in cases of refusals? Uh, I believe that is a deviation request that, that you have there. That is the equivalent of the appeal board. So I believe that is still in place. Um, I'm, I'm subject to correction. As I said, I, I am like everyone else learning the system as we go along. Um, I haven't reached the stage of an appeal process. I'm about to actually, as I said, I got a refusal today from the application that I sent in in December. So I will be going through that route and I can provide probably some additional information later on. Any other questions? Um, yes, from Mr. Kirtley, when he may have missed it, but where can you find uh, the TCB, the TCPD zoning maps? Okay, um, I'm going to show you that in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, we are now going on to actually show you the website. Hopefully, the you know the technology. We hope everything works. Um, so let's see if we can get this to, to come up. And I will share my screen and just take you through the same thing that I was talking about earlier. And I can point out when I reach the appropriate uh, location on the site where the zoning map is going to be. Okay, um, but before we go along, um, one more question. Sure. Um, with respect to the final application, how is it treated going through the various agencies? Uh, I assume you're talking about the in, the, in the manual system, your application, when you submit three applications, it's forward or four applications, sometimes they want now. Your one is kept by them and the rest are forwarded to the next state agencies, usually if it's local health. Um, Local health is supposed to be on the, to the system. Um, I'm not sure to what level they are participating in it. Um, but at this point in time, um, I'm on the assumption that the application goes to at least the local health. The other bodies, you'll still have to do the hard copies when you get the approval and submit to them individually. Those that are not on the system, that is. OK, yeah. that's it, yeah. Okay, so I think that's it there. Um, let me see if I can bring this up now. Uh, just give me one minute while I log on to the site, or if I can, I wonder if I can share my desktop from here. Share screen, whiteboard, screen. So I think everybody is seeing the screen now. Ricardo, can you come? Yeah, on? yeah, yeah, yeah. So everybody's okay. seeing. Right. So um, like everybody else, um, I cleaned up my desktop when I knew you all were coming. So don't worry, my desktop doesn't look like this whole thing. <laughs> right, so we will launch um, our window and we will go to the develop TT website. And this is the develop TT website you will come on to. Um, as, as I said earlier, it assumes that you have already done the TT BizLink um, workaround. So you already have that. So you can go to this area up here, how to register and get that information. Um, or you can go to BizLink directly and do it. So you need to have that information before you can go past this point on the logon screen. So assuming you have that, uh, we will go to the actual logon. And this is it that comes here. This just gives you important information about phishing sites to be careful. And you will be supplied when you get your BizLink ID with your email and your password. So let me just enter. Right, so after you are now going through the log on process. 
Right. So this is now my particular um, history with the system, right? So each applicant will always have this when they enter. And this is, as I said, your, your dashboard will tell you how much applications you have submitted. If you, um, if they are waiting you to send information, it will turn up any action required, how much approved, how much queried, how much refused. As I say, I told you I had a one refused today. So that is actually coming up here. Um, you have under the bottom here, you have recent applications and that's the information that's highlighted here. So this was the actual application that was refused earlier today. You have draft applications. So you can start an application, but not submit it and have it on the system stating here. So you may be awaiting some sort of additional information to complete the application. And you can have it here as a draft application and only submit it when you are completed. And each one here is basically self-explanatory. Um, it's just tabs that you can go through in, at your leisure. Um, in doing, you can in, in submit an application, you can either come up to the top up here and say submit an application, or you can go to the quick links that's on your side here. Um, I see they have um, apply for status of land correspondence, which is what I was talking about earlier, but it's not um, active, right? Also, the request for policy of standard deviations is not active, neither is thumb duty, neither is liquor licenses. So the only one that is actually active, um, to my knowledge, based on what I'm seeing here right now, is for the planning permission that you can send in, planning and building permission. So to start an application, you can either, as I said, go from submit the application, or you can do for the apply for planning permission. Right. So you get some information telling you how this is going to do it. Um, one of the, the things that I foresee, I expect a, an increase in applications coming to uh, professionals to do on behalf of clients, because a lot of people will not have gone through or would not bother going through this process of TP Dislink and all the other hoops to getting into the system and have an individual um, ID. If they're just doing one application, it might be better for them just to come to you. So I expect that surveyors will probably see an increase in the uptake of these jobs. So as I said, in order to determine whether final or, or, or outline permission should be done, there are five, sorry, six questions. I said it was five before, it was six questions here. So does your proposal, the questions are, does your proposal fall under the list of the four to four designating activities which require a certificate of environmental clearance? So if you don't know what they are, you can click here and that's that area there and it will take you to what those areas are, right? It actually loads the thing and then you have to look at all the different things to determine that. So just to show you where you get it. So the system is much um, easier in the sense that it has links to information and you can use those links until you become more familiar with it. Or if you're already familiar with it, you can just go ahead. So basically, you would have to say, so if I'm doing a single family residential or something like that, I have no, I'm not in the 44 designated categories. I'll say no. The second question, does your proposal involve change of use, erection or addition to, to any building development where the cumulative floor area exceeds a gross floor area of 500 square meters? So this is in the case of a building application. So whether it's yes or no, you will, um, Apply, I'm sorry, apply, I'll put the yes or no as your response. In my case, I'm in a residential, so I don't have anything. I don't have any building. I know doing a raw site. The next question is, does your proposal involve the submission of land comprising greater than 20 plots? And in brackets, it's qualified by each plot must fall within the range of 465 square meters to 800 square meters in area. So this is looking at what we would consider single family residential and exceeding 20 plots in size. So that's basically the question they're asking you here, right? So I don't, I'm doing now one application, so I know my answer to that would be no. So are your building or subdivision plans prepared? So you as a surveyor would have done your layout as to what you're proposing, what you're sending in for uh, town and country planning approval. So you've done your AutoCAD design, you have your plan printed, you print it out, you seal it, no, sorry, I'll say that you stamp it with your stamp 
and you sign it and date it. And then you scan it back and have it as a PDF to upload. So that is what is basically you require. So do you have, I, I, are your building plans prepared? Yes. Right. Is your proposal, now this is the question, I think Kurt asked this question as to where the map for zoning is located, and this is where you will find it. In this question, is your proposal in line with the land use policy for the area? So what is encouraged that every person, when they answer, before they answer this question, you come here to click for a map. And you go through this screen, will load. Let's give it a sec. Right. And you get this screen coming in. Now, there's information here for you down to the bottom, notes on the public view map. Um, the way you do it, you just zoom in. Uh, when we were doing the training on this, uh, we were told that, uh, sorry, let me just do this over there, jumping ahead of my time. Uh, we were told that you would have like the Google map, uh, the satellite imagery or the surveys and mapping background to assist you. Unfortunately, I haven't seen that on this current map. Maybe it's something we can discuss with the town and country to move it from this particular map um, to make it um, more relevant to us. Because when you zoom in, let me just show you an example of what I'm talking about. Suppose we are coming into here. This is what you're going to see, right? A street map. Uh, you don't have a reference or a street name. You don't have a um, building showing because this would be buildings at some point in time. This map is based. It may not be the current situation or even an up to date one like our aerial image. So uh, maybe they would improve and give us different options. Um, the one we did look at did have a, an option for bringing in Google Map and um, other maps into it. Uh, but at this point in time, it doesn't. So let me just go back out. Um, Right, so I was asked the question, um, where is the zoning map? So this is the policy map that comes up here, right? So if you have decided, um, let's say I want to do an application, let's say here, right at this location, you make that the central at the corner of Kenneth Street and Southern Greenwood, for instance. If I want to know what the policy is, I know that's right in this location, I turn on the policy map. Right, and it comes up red, and that is in central business district, and it's zoned as commercial. Right, as you pan out to different areas, you will see uh, the different zonings. Next to that, you had brown, which is medium density residential. You have areas in the green, which is agricultural. So you can do a lot of things and go in and see what the zoning is for your particular area of interest that you want to set up. And that will then be used to inform answering the question in the other page, which was here, are you in conformity with the land use policy? All right? Um, someone may ask the question, is this an updated map? Um, I can't answer that, honestly. I believe this is their last map that they produced several years ago. And they may have variations to this map. And I expect that Town and Country will then uh, make the relevant changes to the, the variations as their policy evolve over time. Okay. So that's it basically for going into the area. Oh, one more thing um, I forgot to show. And I saw this just now when I zoomed in. Let's see, I just zoomed in into an area. You notice there are these green icons and um, this is something new that was not shown when the training was done, maybe because there wasn't any data, but I noticed this this afternoon when I was looking at it. On clicking on one of them, you can actually see the application number, the applicant, the address, the nature of the development, and the status of it. So I don't know if they intend to keep this layer um, this particular layer to done and do normal privacy issues to people in the future, but at this point in time, um, it's there. So you can actually see a lot of information regarding who has applied in your area and what they have applied for and what the status is. Okay? So um, if you look, uh, I'm not sure if I can bring up one of them that has it where it has the status. All these are forwarded to planner. Um, 
I know the one, right, this one's returned on the terminal. So you can actually see the status of um, any application that's on the system here. And um, the one I told you that I got refused, so it's actually on the system and showing up already. I only got that today. So it, it seems to be um, an active system that is updated very quickly. So back to your application process now, after you have determined whether your zoning is in conformity or not, or not let's say, yes, it was in conformity, right? Um, and then they ask you, have you um, um, received consideration through the appeal or variation process? So sometimes um, the system would be that you did an application, you got refusal, you asked for a variation or you asked for an appeal, you got the variation. So now you're doing back the application. So this is where it comes in here. So in this case, no. And you submit the answers. So you get a pop-up box coming up here. So it tells you the zones that they have, um, <clears throat> that are, that you are submitting applications for. So that's the T1 and the T5 region. So that's the, uh, Northwest Peninsula coming back to Devo Mountain and coming down central to Shagwanas and the uh, Plaxan B, the central area. Right? And if you want to know again where those are, you can look at the regional map. So this here is the regional map that shows you what is currently con um, covered by the system. Okay? So you have any, if you're not sure whether you fall inside or outside an area, you can come and consult this map and figure that out. So I think that it's pretty nice that there's all this information here that I don't know if people were really looking at that information previously. Right, so we're back to the application. So we can say, okay. And then we get their response. Right, planning permission type, what do you want? Outline, so this is basically outline planning permission or planning permission application for final. You would decide what you want to submit here. So let's say I'm going to submit, and it is encouraged, of course, that you would refer the outline planning permission before you go to the final. So let's say we're going to the outline planning permission. Let's submit that. Right. So as I said, once an application is submitted, it automatically generates a number. This is your reference number in the future concerning this application. So you'll always keep a record of this, I would expect as a applicant in some other outside area in case something happens with the system, you have your own backup, right? As with all um, applications to town and country, if it's a state project, it goes through a different route from private sector projects. So that's one of the first questions they will ask you here. If it's a state project, yes or no? So no. Um, was there any variation? No, this is the first time we have application. Title. So Mr. First name. So as you're seeing here, this is the typical information that you would supply for the TCPD application process. The person's name, their um, title, their gender, their email address, because that's different because remember you use an electronic system for them to respond to you. You must have an email address now for them to respond to you, right? Uh, your telephone number, mobile number, your applicant's role. So if you are applying as a surveyor on behalf, right? You would be a agent, right? If you are doing it as a outline approval and you want to know, remember, you could um, find out if they would allow a particular type of development on a particular location. You could do it as a prospective lease holder, et cetera. So you basically just go in through and do the same information, generally speaking, as what you would have provided when you did the paper application. Right? Um, so what are you applying for? And these are your options. So you have your new building addition to existing structure, so the modification to a structure, a alteration, um, a subdivision or engineering operations. If you're doing um, land reformation or some sort of thing like that, you can submit under that. So let's say we're doing um, a subdivision. Brief description of the proposed development, All right? To excise 5,000 or 
464.5 square meters from a larger parcel. comprising um, one vector, okay? Is this a phase development? Are you, is this only part of the development you're coming back for more or are you done with that? So this is a phase development, no, I just ask him for that. Name of the development, um, if it's a, a project that has a name, Orchard Gardens, Eve Guns, um, AGC, whatever, you put it in here. Um, is it for a commercial purpose? So if it's a thing for a family member, it's not for a commercial purpose, um, right? I'm sorry, um, the, the intended land use is not for commercial, right? Um, and then you come with the, all the typical information, the island, whether it's in Trinidad, whether it's in Tobago. The, what is different here now, you have a community. So it's asking you of a community. Right, so actually this box isn't working, so I'll probably have to talk to town and country. This actually gives you a list of all the communities in Trinidad and you'd select the closest community to your site that you're applying for. Um, it did have a drop down box before, but I've not seen one. Right. Select the island first. Sorry? Oh, okay. the island. maybe it's not. Ah, brilliant. Thank you, Ricardo. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> You're That's already um, Right. So you will come here and you will select from this very long list, the closest community to where you are developing, right? Where your application. So let me say my application was in, let me say Cuba. I live in Cuba, a central boy. I feel very props. <laughs> Cuba village, right? Um, postcode is not necessary. We don't have a postcode as yet. Water parish, so. Um, this might be the ward of Hoover, right? Town or village, so you'll type in here. So your typical contact information, street, lamppost number, milepost number, if you have it. Uh, the same old information, assessment rule, unique reference number, um, area of site, mm -hmm. right? So the area of site might be um, 464.5, right? Meter squared or hectare whatever it is, specify the estimated value of the development. Um, as I said, if you're doing this for family, I will put zero. I'm going to put a value for the development. It doesn't really have anything to do with them, right? And propose building or land purpose. So in this case, we want to get residential, right? Um, you have residential, single family, residential, multifamily, agriculture, forestry, fishing, Etc. cetera, going on the road. You'll notice here, it does not have homestead. So one of the questions I have, where does homestead fall in this? Is it considered agriculture? Or is it considered um, residential, multi multifamily or what? So we won't give them that option, although they call it homestead and they give you homestead approval in letters. So that's one of the questions I would have for town and country at some point in time. So let's say residential, single family, right? Any remarks that you have? And you add that if you have another purpose. So suppose you're doing a development and you had um, open space, etc. You would put all that things inside here. Communal space, you'll put that inside here as additional thing, right? Um, the existing land purpose. So what is the existing? Let's say um, the existing purpose was agriculture, right? Right. So you have added that. And again, you can, if it's um, over a wider area, you bridge in different zonings, you can put those zonings inside of here. And where to send feedback concerning the application, right? So that will then take you to your next um, field here. Uh, let me just make sure I have answered, put entries and everything, because it's not gonna let me go on to the other stage. Um, Kamal, yeah. just before you move on there, mm -hmm. the title, how many options you have uh, dropping out from the title? Uh, let's go Mr. Up. Mrs. and what and what and what? 
Mr. Mrs. Miss. No doctors can apply. <laughs> so when you reach African gender now, when you have male, female, and other now, what you go put in the title for other? For other? Well, right. Remember, um, <laughs> international, <laughs> you know, with genderless. You got to leave out the arm. You got to leave out the arm. On the clear or something I'm, like yeah. that, but that's the way the form I'm is. I'll leave out the arm, the title on top now. Well, this is it. But it is a required field, so you will have to select one, <laughs> whether you like it or not. <laughs> right? It's not going to let you go on to the next thing. Right? Well, that's good, Dubai. <laughs> So the owner address, um, one ten. So, um, well, while it is your type of while it is your type of that, Kamal, would you be able to maybe address some of the questions? You yes. Can here. All right. Um, there's see, I have two questions here that is somewhat related. Sure. Um, how do you get a TT Connect ID, and is there a cost? To log into the website to this website. Okay. Um, the, the first page that you came on to the uh, develop TT, there is a link to it, or you can go on web search on any browser mm -hmm. for both the TT Connect and um, uh, TT BizLink. Mm -hmm. Right? You need the TT BizLink to get in here. So you need to do the TT Connect first and then do the TT BizLink. It mm -hmm. takes a couple of days for them to process it. Uh, within a week, I, I got mine. But, and as I said, if you're doing it through the Institute, we may be able to, we, we're hoping to expedite it for you. Mm -hmm. Right? And how are returned and determined applicants dealt with? Are they considered under the deviation request? Are you notified of the return and determined application via email? Yes, answer to yes. Anytime a decision is made, you will get an email uh, where you submitted the application um, email down to the bottom down here. Uh, where was it? Somewhere down here where we, oh, sorry, I didn't do it yet. But when you come to this section, this is where you are putting the information as to who to respond to. Okay. Right? So it will, they will send you any queries, any additional information, any approval, rejections, decisions will go to that particular email. So you need to be aware of that. And can landowners apply on their own right? Yes, they can. However, they do need to still get the uh, TT BizLink and the TT Connect ID. That's why I told you that um, I said earlier that most likely I would see a, a, an increase in people coming to surveyors to do this for them because they're not going, I don't think many people are going to go through that effort to do it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just put it in information inside here so that um, we have something. There's also a comment. There's a uh -huh. comment. I don't think this is a question um, from Mr. Bakari. Um, to be unfortunately, with it, this new process has eliminated the face to face meeting of applicants with the members of the appeal board. We'll have then returned to a system of those in ivory towers making decisions without having to deal with individuals. Uh, yes and no. You can still go in and meet the development control officer and the planning officer as you have done in the past, right? Um, I don't know what their regulations are with respect to COVID and whether you have to make an, uh, an appointment with them. Uh, the practitioners will be more aware of it than me. At this point in time, I don't typically go in. Um, but you can still go in and discuss the application prior to it being finalized. And one thing that you would see... Um, when, when we looked at the map, it actually tells you the status. So even when you log on at the first point in the dashboard, it tells you the status of where each application is. So you can see um, it's at the reception, it's at the field office check, it's at the planning office of the decision and make your appropriate representations at that point in time. Okay, any other questions? Um, did, did, did you answer the question if, if there's a cost? Oh, sorry. No, there's no cost. Okay. Right? So let's see if you accept us. Um, enter a valid, oh, sorry, email address. I put my address here. Right. 
Uh, and for your have some checks and balances in it for you. For your postal code, you could put five zeros. Okay, I just put any. Yeah. Um. You have to choose your gender. I didn't choose. Yeah, man, I choose the applicant gender. So that is filled. This is filled. 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 Just making sure all the um required fees are filled. Oh, no agenda. agenda. That is what was missing. All right. Uh, fill, 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 fill. Right. I think that is it. And at any point, you can go to save as draft and come back to this to complete it. Right. So it's not that you lower and you must complete it, otherwise you lose it. Uh, postal code. Oh, oh, sorry. There's a number they want here. Sorry. I'll use the Ricardo's uh, number. No, no, no. So zero. Any, Five any zeros. Number. Five zero. Well, it doesn't matter. Once you put a number, it works. Okay. Right. So you have entered the, you have done the form. You are now to the point of doing the site location. And again, as I said, you go into the area of interest where you are looking to do the application. So we put on that as Coover. So let me go down to Coover. Suppose I do an application inside of here. Suppose I'm doing an application for a parcel here, right? So you come here, you draw. And you double click, right? So you see you have drawn a polygon representing your site. Gives an approximate acreage, make sure your site in the right place. Etc. If you need more take points, you can add and stretch as the case may be, so that it looks the way you want it to look. So you make a mistake, it is supposed to be up here, right? And when, or if you don't like it, you delete it by this X up here. You come back, you start over your drawing again. Suppose that drawing place too big. Right, so if I'm okay with that, I just say save here. And you can see the icon up here. Description, call it John Spot, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and you say save. The system will tell you whether it's a, a success. Right, and it you notice a change color and you no longer have the dimension. So that now becomes your sitemap, your digital sitemap, right? And then you click next. Now you're onto the upload document. So you see the, the site location is not very complicated. Um, as I said, my main concern is that for context purposes and for the surveyor, because it does not coordinate the guide that you draw anything in the right place, I would have preferred either an image map of um, from the satellite imagery um, so you can have an idea what what you're drawing in context, but that is something that we can discuss with TCPD. So we are now on to the stage of the upload documents, and as I said before, this is where you will add files. So authorization letter. So if you are acting on behalf of someone, you would need a letter of authorization, and that is what you would put in here. Of course, have your PDF scan file and you will add files. And then you will say start upload and it will load it up inside of here. I'm not going to go through that process right now. It's a simple click, click, click process. I think most people can handle this without any issues. And then you have the other document upload section. So if you are the applicant, you don't have to upload anything in the authorization letter because you are the authorized person. If you are not, you need an authorization letter. Then you have the document upload section where you'd upload your certificate or deed, or deeds if you have several of them, cadastral plan, survey plan, cadastral seat or survey plan, your location sketch, and any other supported documents that you would want to send in together with your application. Right? If you are doing building plans, this is where you upload your building plans in the, in the next section. So description of the proposed plan, conceptual plans, contour maps, and people are more familiar with the building operations. I don't really do building operations, so I am not familiar with this. You will know what the files are that you would upload to the relevant section. All right? I can say save as a draft. 
right? It tells you to save. As I said, at any point you can save. Go on. Next, and this is the summary of the information that you have supplied to them. Reference number and all the, the information that you have supplied now comes up inside of here. So you will check it over and make sure everything is okay. Right? Once you are okay with everything that's inside here, you will then come to the terms and conditions and you have to accept them. Right? So all of them, you have to agree to the submitting of the information in accordance with your privacy statement, terms and privacy statement. I've successfully uploaded all the required documents specified here. So you'll click yes. I have declared the statements contain the application and best member I need to be true and complete representation. You'll click yes. I understand that statement contain it just false or any omission required may invalidate my application. Click yes, and then you click submit. When you click submit, it will then generate an email to you. So whatever email you have put higher up here in the application as the contact, this, this email address here, it will send the confirmation email to that address saying, yes, you have we have received it and this is your reference information. So that in a nutshell is the process. Okay, um, in terms of the application. When you finish that, it just goes to the, to the last stage, which is finish. All right, so um, Ricardo, I don't know if you have any questions. Yeah. Um, we have two, two questions relating to what they just shared about. Um, is oh, there a, uh -huh. uh, as you're uploading documents, is there a limit, a size limit? You know, the idea is this when you're uploading large files. The answer is yes, it's stated on the, um, just above the each window is a 10 megabyte limit per file that you're uploading so you cannot exceed 10 megabytes in any single attachment okay right uh -huh. um i'm not aware of any restriction as to the total number of attachments yeah. right um, i'm not aware that we won't yeah. of any limits on that but any particular file has to be under 10 megabytes and that's why PDFs are preferred. And is the system running in Tobago? Um, based on the map that I showed you, where the regions, remember when we clicked on it, um, yeah. it did tell you that region one and region five are active, and it showed you a map of where the active areas are that you can go and click on. So my answer to that, based on that map, is no. I have not tried to submit an application in Tobago, so I'm just going by the map in answering that. And as a surveyor making an application as an agent, will you have to upload an authorization letter from the owner? I would say yes. And what if not? Will they deny? Uh, they, may, they may tell you that you would have to do it as an additional document, or they may determine it as being undetermined if you don't respond. Okay. I think that covers all of the questions. Just an another comment about the cost. Um, there's no cost as yet, but you would have to, but you would have agreed to any future cost that may be charged. Um, the TT BizLink and the TT Connect, uh, to my knowledge, provided at no cost because it is supposed to be your digital, digital ID representing you. So there will not be any cost attached to that as far as we have been told. Um, there, I am not aware of any intention to put a cost to that in the future. Um, however, um, I do control the system, so I, I can't say definitively there will never be a cost. All I can say at this point, there's no cost. Yeah. Well, that's all the questions so far. Okay. So that is it basically. Um, in terms of it, uh, uh, let me see if there's anything else I need to show you all. Uh, no, this was the map, as I said earlier, that we came up with to show which are the areas covered. So these are yeah. the areas that are covered yeah. by the system at this um, point in time. It's the T1 and T5. And we are not familiar with town and country zoning, but this is what T1 and T5 represents. Okay, and there's just two other comments keep coming through. Um, well, one is a question actually. To your knowledge, how far is the planning system with respect to policy changes? Uh, I believe the map that they have shown 
is does not represent the current policy um, that they have. There have been some, uh, as we are aware, I, I know personally that in the Rosillac area in Grand Trace, they have zoned the agricultural, original agricultural zoning in that area to one acre homestead. I don't believe it's reflected in the map. So I don't think it is right up there. Uh, town and country will probably let us know how fast they will update their background maps. Mm -hmm. um, to my knowledge, it is a GIS map and they can make those changes rather quickly. Um, again, it's how fast they do it, I, I can't say. But I would say that the, the, the planning map may not be fully up to date to the current time. And any information about batch applications? If um, is they going to are they going to entertain batch application of users? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by batch application. This is where I, I, I spoke a little bit about about what I call complicated applications, like the example that I gave, where you want to apply for regularization of a parcel, and um, maybe then you want to apply for subdivision. Right, they may be considered separate at this point in time. To my knowledge, it has to go in a separate applications. Um, I can't see how you would give those specifications or what you want to do within that structure of questions that are online. So I would think that you would have to submit separate applications, um, but just that one flows to the other. So, like if you put the original parcel application to regularize, <coughs> sorry, when you do the second application you would cross-reference as additional information, that first application number in it. So you are providing them with information that yes, this is an application by itself. However, it is related to another application. That's where I see you being able to do it as a, as a linked application. But to say you can do multiple applications at the same time on the same number, I don't see that happening. Okay. Um, and I think this uh, th there's two comments as it relates to the same ownership, you selecting yourself as an owner or an agent with, with the letters and such, right? Uh -huh. um, like Mr. DeCari is saying, well, what, what safeguard is there preventing someone from making an application, identifying themselves as an owner, but actually is not? And I am thinking that this should be something, that this should be something we, we should bring to the, their attention. Mr. Doyle previously mentioned that he submitted an application uh, as an agent without any letter of saying that he is associated with the owner in any way and it was accepted. Right. So yeah, I, I, I am just based on these two comments, I'm thinking this is something yeah. we should share with the we should share with them at our next meeting. Yes, now um to my knowledge, even what you put on the form, they still verify using the deed as to who is the owner. Okay. Right. So that is a, a, another backup that that's in the system inherently. Right. So they, there is a way for them to confirm whether somebody is an owner or not an owner. And that's why I said it's important, um, in my view, for the surveyor to identify himself not as the owner, but to identify himself as the agent and have a, a letter. So whenever you are taking a job from a client mm -hmm. and you have to do a town and country, you should have a standardized letter from this person saying, this is, this is my property. Well, the name of the person, of course, identify them. This is my property. And I hereby authorize the surveyor and the name the surveyor to be my agent in respect of applications so statutory bodies for approvals. And you can have your client sign that. Um, remember, the ISTT standard is also for contracts, written contracts to be developed and utilized by surveyors, by its members. So I don't see that as being anything onerous to put in place and to have running to put into the applications online in yeah. terms of the, the approval letter. Um, and, and there's two questions as relates to the time frames here. One uh -huh. is them, what is the average time? Do you think the time frame is different from this online system versus the paper-based system? The answer to that is no. I believe it's the same system. I got a response within, within um, what? Six weeks, five weeks. Yeah, and do you know what is the what is TCPD's time frame to having everywhere? Um, no, I can't. I, can't I wouldn't be able to answer that. Um, what I can say, um, 
I, I have been told, I, it didn't happen to me personally, but I, have, but I have been told by other surveyors um, when they attempted to put in applications within these zonings that you're seeing here, mm -hmm. these areas, and they went in to put in hard copy applications, they were refused to be taken. So okay. you must go to, through the digital system once it's on the digital, the areas on the digital system. I don't think you have a choice in that. Okay, are there any other questions? Yeah, yeah I, no, no more question. I think this is just a comment from Mr. Doyle. Um, he submitted an application on the 22nd of December. There was a quick query on the account on the 23rd. He got no email notification. The only time he saw the, they responded to the application was the day when he logged into his account. The application was returned on the terminal on the 29th December without any notification. So right. you have to log in to check your account for the status. Um, now, this is not something that is unique to TCPD. Um, your email that you are providing to TCPD in the application, uh, you have to be careful in your settings and look in your spam and look in your trash regularly. Um, it's not unique to TCPD. I have received um, emails from other people and it went to trash and I never saw it, right? So you, as a holder of that email, you can't expect it to appear in your inbox automatically, right? Um, so you, the onus is on you to ensure that you check your email correctly. I can tell you that the, because it's an automatic system, the, the email is going to be set. Whether your, um, it goes to your trash, whether your inbox is full, that's your responsibility. They can't take responsibility for that. The onus is on you to have those things in place. Um, I'm seeing Mr. Ganeshet's hand is up. Um, do you have a question, Mr. Ganeshet? You can unmute your mic. I guess not. Um, Tell him how to unmute. He may not know how to unmute. Just in case. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Ganesh, that? Yes, the sign is probably up in error. Okay. All right. Um, are those all the issues or questions? Well, well if that is it, are we, can we close? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, I would just ask um, the, the, the people who are present, and even for those who are not present, as you communicate with your fellow professionals, if you all are desirous of having the Institute represent, make a representation to do a batch sign up for the uh, TT um, BizLink and TT Connect, um, you should send in an email maybe to, 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 uh, to Ricardo or contact him somewhere in formal fashion. And so would, the Institute will be aware of how many people it needs to um, represent in making that application. Just before we close, this is Paula Drake speaking. I would like to just make a, a comment based on some of the, the um, what we saw in the chat. And it has to, this, this comment is in relation to people who might be misidentified or as, you, as we were saying, some people might be fraudulently attempting to pose as somebody else. Mm -hmm. I, in my discussions with Develop TT, because they had reached out to uh, the ISTT officially, um, and so the representatives at TCPD, when I had a conversation with them, and I asked a question similar to that, because they can, yes, Paul Adrates can register as an individual person and working as an agent for whoever, but Paul Adrates also has a government function and there would be other surveyors in my situation. How do you determine when Paul Adrix is working for the government and when Paul Adrix is an individual? And they assured me that they have checks and balances from the superiors, whoever you work for in the government, that yes, Paul Adrix can be registered twice, one as an individual and one as a government officer. And they will know from the 
documentation that was provided, which person you are acting as. So mm -hmm. in the same way, if you're acting on behalf of an, of, of an, you're acting on behalf of an owner, there will be questions when they receive the application, they know whatever they have to look for, but they assured me it, sh it should not end up being a fraudulent matter. They have their checks and balances internally. Yeah, I, I would see so, and I would also so, um, note that as you are applying with a TT Connect or a TT Bizlink rather um, ID, that would have been certified. There is a back trail leading to who submitted the application. It's not just somebody posing and you know they, they pull a fast one and they get a false um, ID. This is supposed to be equivalent to the Trinidad and Tobago ID card that you get. It is verified by TT Connect and, and the other bodies before you get it. So there is a back trail to whoever submitted such an application. And I'm sure they, there will be action taken against somebody who commits fraud in that regard. Okay, Ricardo? Yep. All right. Um, well, thank you all. Well, thank you all for attending this meeting today. Um, I'm just going to, um, Naim just had us a quick question. Um, we should maybe provide a standard letter that is in train. The board is working on, on that actually. Um, have a standard letter for the land surveyors.